At one point, it looked like California football was going to become a premier powerhouse on the West Coast. They saw themselves ranked as high as number two in the nation in the mid-2000s, and it looked like Jeff Tedford was building something special, sending guys like Aaron Rodgers, Marshawn Lynch, Justin Forsett, and Deshaun Jackson to the NFL. But since the late 2000s, the program has struggled, and to stay in a power conference, they needed to take a pay cut for television revenues, which is going to set the program back even more. This is the fall of Cal football, a once promising program turned nightmare. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Also, let me know if you think Justin Wilcox can turn things around for Cal, and if not him, who in the comment section below. Coming off the Tom Holmo era in Berkeley, California, Cal football was in a really bad place. The football team found very little success and was not and had not had a winning season going back to Keith Gilbertson's second season when they went 9-4 in 1993. Steve Mariucci served as a head coach in 1996, but was always an NFL guy. He led the Golden Bears to a 6-6 record before leaving for the San Francisco 49ers head coaching job following the season after being the leading candidate for multiple teams. Mariucci was known as a whiz kid at the time and was going to have a lot of pressure in San Francisco, but now the Golden Bears needed to find a brand new head coach. Omo had served as Mariucci's defensive coordinator in 1996 and was a four-time Super Bowl winning player with the San Francisco 49ers. He was only 36 at the time, but throughout his football career he had played for teams that won conference championships in 19 of his 22 years of playing. Going back to high school. That reputation as a winner, along with his leadership abilities and character, were traits that led Cal Athletic Director John Kaser to quickly name Homo head coach just two days following the resignation of Steve Mariucci. Many felt that Homo was going to be a great head coach and would continue building what Mariucci had started before his shocking departure. One reporter wrote back in 1997, This is a tremendous choice for the University of California. He is so far above any other candidate I could think of for the head coaching position at Cal, and it must have been an easy decision. He is an outstanding football mind, he's extremely intelligent, and he's well organized. He just exudes class and will be a great asset to the University of California. Let's just say things did not go very well for Homo, as he would finish with a 12-39 record and no winning seasons from 1997 to 2001. They never finished higher than 6th in the Pac-10 Conference, and during that season would have their 4 wins, including their 3 conference wins, vacated due to using ineligible players. The university decided to look to Jeff Tedford. The goal of his? To lead the program to one of their first winning seasons since 1993, and the program was coming off their worst season in program history, going 1-10 in 2001. Jeff Tedford was a coach known for his work ethic and throughout his Cal career, worked so much so he would sleep on an air mattress in his office from time to time. During his first National Signing Day in 2002, SF Gate wrote, He is organized, purposeful, and not prone to Bobby Bowden like displays of charisma. He was very serious but was extremely confident. Tedford had been rising up the coaching ranks, spending time with the Calgary Stampeders of the CFL, Fresno State, and Oregon when he took the Cal head coaching job. The Tedford era started off on a high note as Cal would dismantle Baylor 70-22. Tedford immediately made a program that was dead in the water competitive, as they would finish their first season going 7-5, which was the biggest turnaround in all of college football that year, and led to him being named the Pac-10 Coach of the Year. Tedford helped snap the Golden Bears' 19-game losing streak to Washington and 7-game losing streak to arch-rival Stanford in the big game. Sadly, Cal was given a bull ban linked back to their use of ineligible players in 1999 that I previously mentioned. This was due to improper benefits given to 34 players and 4 recruits for incidental hotel expenses between 1997 and 2001. Due to an incident with the basketball team in 1997, Cal was considered a repeat offender. Cal was not happy with this ruling as they had already cut 4 scholarships or were given a 1 year probation by the Pac-10 already. The NCAA found that a lack of institutional control occurred at Cal because it failed to adequately investigate allegations of academic fraud after repeated indications that the violations had occurred. Tedford signed an extension following the season, and it finally looked like Cal was back on track. Led by quarterback Aaron Rodgers, who threw for 2,903 passing yards, 19 touchdowns, and 5 interceptions, whilst rushing for 5 touchdowns on the ground, 
The Golden Bears finished a 2003 season 8-6. They upset eventual national co-champions USC in triple overtime and beat Virginia Tech in a shootout 52-49 to win the 2003 Insight Bowl. They finished the season hot, winning five of their last six games, and there were high expectations for the 2004 season. Their bowl win was the first bowl win in a decade, behind Aaron Rodgers' 2,566 passing yards, 24 touchdowns, and 8 interceptions. Cowood finished a 2004 season ranked 9th in the AP poll with a 10 2 season, which was the first 10 win season since 1949. Tedford was once again named Pac 10 Coach of the Year, and it seemed like Cow was building something special. The departure of Rodgers, Cow would take a step back going 8 4, would see running back Marshawn Lynch rush for 1,246 yards and 10 touchdowns on the ground. Cal had been ranked as high as number 10 in the nation, but they would see that drop after losing to UCLA 47-40, as well as four of their last six regular season games. They would beat BYU 35-28 in the Las Vegas Bowl to finish the year on a high note. Find Marshawn Lynch's 1,356 rushing yards and 11 touchdowns in 2006, as well as Nate Longshore's 3,021 passing yards, 24 passing touchdowns and 13 interceptions, Cal would finish the year 10-3 and, and blowing Texas A&M out in the Holiday Bowl 45-10. After losing the season opener on the road to Tennessee, the Golden Bears would go on an 8-game win streak in which they scored more than 40 points in a game 5 straight weeks, and were to a share of the Pac-10 title, their first Pac-10 title since 1975. Into the 2007 season, there was a lot of excitement surrounding the team. The combination of Longshore and junior wide receiver Deshaun Jackson was coming off a year where he had 59 receptions for 1,060 yards and 9 touchdowns, was expected to be a lethal one. And they also had Justin Forsett at running back, who was finally going to get his opportunity as a starter with Lynch now in the NFL. Cal also saw season tickets sales jump from 16,200 in 2002 to 41,336 in 2007, setting new records each year from 2004 to 2007. Things looked great at the start of the season with Cal starting the year 5 0 and ranked number two in the nation, their highest ranking since 1951. Things were looking up until Longshore got hurt, and as time was winding down, freshman quarterback Kevin Riley failed to get out of bounds to set up a game tying field goal against Oregon State, and the Golden Bears would fall to the Beavers 31 28 at home. To add even more salt into the wound, number one LSU had lost as well, and Cal would have jumped up to the number one spot in the polls had they won. The season would fall apart for Cal after the Oregon State game, as they would lose five of their last six regular season games, and Tedford suffered his first loss to Washington, as well as Stanford while at Cal. They would beat Air Force in the Armed Forces Bowl 42-36. The tables were starting to turn on Tedford. Many criticized his play-calling ability during his losing streak, and many questioned whether he made the right decision going with Longshore over Riley as a starting quarterback. Some even saying it cost them a shot at a national title. Riley had once again come in for an injured longshore during the Golden Bears bowl game down 21 to nothing and led them to the comeback win and put up great numbers. After the game, Tedford said there was going to be a quarterback competition heading into the 2008 season. Both quarterbacks played to a standstill throughout fall practice and Riley would be named the starting quarterback, but both quarterbacks would get playing time throughout the year as Cal would go 9-4 beating Miami in the Emerald Bowl 24-17. Javad Best became a star, rushing for 1,580 yards and 15 touchdowns on the ground, replacing Forsett. With Longshore gone, Riley would become the starting quarterback for Cal, leading them to an 8-5 record, while Shane Vereen and Best would combine for 24 rushing touchdowns, but neither rushed for more than 1,000 yards. They would lose to Utah in the poinsettia bowl, and this is where the foundation would begin to collapse for Cal. They would suffer their first losing season since 2001, going 5-7 in 2010, but Tedford would become the winningest head coach in Cal football history in 2011, leading them back to a bowl game. But a 3-9 record in 2012 would lead to his firing. Towards the tail end of his career, at Cal, the guy once known as a passing guru saw his offenses struggle and the defense was allowing 33 points per game. This was all happening while their arch-rival Stanford were rising to the top of the Pac-12 led by quarterback Andrew Luck. At the time, the decision seemed like the right one but it was a sad way to watch a legendary Cal head coach go. The man chosen to replace Tedford, Sonny Dykes, who had led the highest scoring offense in college football the year before, while also having the nation's worst defense. Dykes had found a lot of success at Louisiana Tech, leading them to a 22-15 record and a 17-8 record in his last two years there. 
He was one of the people at the top of the board for Cal, and many were excited for the hire. Unfortunately, it would not work out. In Dykes' first season, the California defense surrendered the most passing yards in Division I college football history, leading it to becoming one of the worst defenses in the nation. The Golden Bears would finish the season going 1-11, making it the worst season in school history, going back to when the school began football in 1886. There were some flashes of excitement though, as true freshman Jared Goff became the first true freshman to start a season opener for Cal in its history and threw for 3,508 yards, 18 touchdowns, and 10 interceptions. But things were still shaky as Cal lost by its largest margin to Stanford, losing by over 50 points. The offense continued to be one of the best in the nation in 2014, but the defense also continued to struggle. They lost to Arizona on a Hail Mary 49-45, beat Colorado 59-56, and allowed Washington State's Connor Holiday to throw for 734 passing yards and the Golden Bears 60-59 win. They would finish the year 5-7 and, and missed a bowl game for the fourth time in five years. Things looked great at the start of the 2015 season for Cal. They beat Texas 45-44 in Austin and snapped the six-game losing streak to Washington, beating them 30-24 on the road. Their first win in Seattle in over a decade. They started off the year 5-0, but a brutal back half of the schedule saw them finish 7-5. They beat Air Force 55-36 in the Armed Forces Bowl. Goff finished the year throwing for 4,714 yards, 43 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions, while the defense still finished in the bottom half of the NCAA statistically. Goff would enter the 2016 NFL Draft, where he would be taken first overall, and Cal would fall off again going 5-7 and seven and missing their fifth bowl game in seven seasons. Sonny Dykes would be fired after the season going 19-30 and, and losing to UCLA, Stanford, and USC 11 times in four years. Dykes, though, was put in a tough position when taking over as head coach. Tedford had let the academics go towards the tail end of his tenure, the Golden Bears were on the verge of being bowl ineligible due to their academics. Dykes rebuilt a football culture that focused on its academic reputation and instilled a culture of responsibility and accountability. Dykes and his staff would penalize players for academic infractions, with penalties including early morning workouts not just for the offending student athletes, but his entire position group. So although Dykes could not find a ton of success on the field, mainly due to their defensive performances, he at least helped reshape the program's academic performance. To replace Sonny Dykes, Cal would choose to hire former Wisconsin defensive coordinator Justin Wilcox. Wilcox had played college football at Oregon before starting his coaching career at Boise State. He served as Tedford's linebacker coach at Cal from 2003 to 2005 and spent time at Boise State, Tennessee, Washington, and USC along with Wisconsin, serving as the defensive coordinator. He called for the fans to get reinvested into the program to make Memorial Stadium a hard place to play at for road teams. Some wondered whether Cal would pursue Chip Kelly, but at the time, Wilcox seemed like the right choice. During Wilcox's first season, Cal finished 5-7 with wins over North Carolina, Ole Miss, and number 8 Washington, while also losing three games by three points or less. They could have easily been a bowl-eligible team had one of those games gone in their way. In 2018, Cal made it back to a bowl game going 7-6 and, and snapped a 14-year losing streak to USC. Wilcox's teams were known for their defense, the opposite of what Dykes was known for, but the offenses were terrible. In 2016, Cal's offenses averaged 42.6 points per game, while in 2018, they averaged 20.4 points per game. They finished the 2018 season with one of the lowest offensive efficiencies in the Power 5. In 2019, Cal finished 8-5, were ranked number 15 in the nation after a 4-0 start, and ended their losing streak to Stanford, beating them and making it to back-to-back -back bowl games for the first time since 2009, where they beat Illinois 35-20. Things were looking good for Cal, but fans were not showing up to the game still, as Cal had one of the worst attendances over the previous five years at the Power 5 level. They were dead last in the Pac-12 when it came to average stadium fill at just under 70%. Cal had to deal with some of the strictest restrictions in 2020, and it would set their program back for a few years. They finished the 2020 season 1-3 with their lone win coming over number 21 Oregon and followed that up with a 5-7 record in 2021. This program seemed to be recovering from everything they had to deal with the previous year, but 2022 would be a big step back. Throughout the season, the offense would sputter and failed to score for 20 minutes at a time, multiple times. They finished the season 4-8, and, and Wilcox made changes to the offensive staff. While others may have thought Wilcox would be on the hot seat heading into the 2023 season, due to Cal's financial and administrative challenges, he seemed fine according to ESPN. Luckily, 
Cal would be able to make it back to a bowl game for the first time since 2019, finishing the year 6-7. and seven. While there might have been some positives on the field, Cal's collapse over the past decade and a half has put them in a really tough position. The collapse of the Pac-12, Cal chose to join the ACC, yes, the Atlantic Coast Conference, which is mainly on the East Coast. With strong academics in the San Francisco television market, some may be curious why the Big Ten and Big 12 would choose to look over them, and it's because of how bad they had been at football over the past decade. Cal will now enter a 12-year contract with the ACC, where for the first seven years it will only receive 30% of the full membership share of revenue, or somewhere from 10 to 20 million annually. A steep drop from the 37 million annually Cal got under its Pac-12 deal. Their desperation to find a new conference and lack of fan support may lead to the program collapsing again and may cause them to become a bottom dweller in the ACC. Cal was once a national title contender in the 2000s and now they are a shell of themselves, which is extremely depressing. What do you think? Can Justin Wilcox turn everything around? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and as always, remember to embrace the grind.